And welcome to episode 809. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ya hooligans. It is hilarious how the police react when it has to deal with motorcycle clubs and national runs. You're going to see a video here about the Hells Angels Canada run. These cops were checking every single one of these members and it was even funnier that the townspeople were like pulling up lawn chairs and loving the sight you even had one that said hey this is awesome this is the safest place to be and they're correct it is the safest place to be when there is a club in town beautiful stuff also we have some whiners and the defense attorney coming out of that unbelievable oh, verdict in that truck driver. And he ain't a semi driver, by the way, who killed seven uh, members of the Jarheads Motorcycle Club. But we also have his convictions that he's had that I'm guessing the jury didn't get to hear. Because we got a bunch of haters out there saying, what are you guys all upset about? The bikers were drunk. They shouldn't have been on the motorcycle. Yeah, we got his charges. We got what he said. The whole nine yards. Before we begin, an 06 lowrider behind me. Oh, she's a beauty, isn't she? Uh, it's a 2006, belongs to Sarah Witkowski. Man, I love these lowriders, especially the older ones. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a twin cam. And I believe it's the first year that the six-speed came uh, about on this one. Love the paint job. It's a beauty, man. It's kind of actually better than my old 15, or my 15 here. It looks a better, ba uh, better paint scheme in the whole nine yards. So, rock on, Sarah. Anyway, we're going to get into some news. Don't forget, second half of the show, you can talk to me over on Discord while I'm doing the show. Only a couple more days, then we'll be back to normal with China Doll, the whole crew in the morning. Uh, so let's get to it right here. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Sad state of affairs right now. This out of the Post and Courier. Paramedic biker killed when car runs into the wreck scene. We've all seen these type of accidents on the internet. This one was pretty bad, I guess. Authorities say paramedic and motorcyclists have died after a car drove into a group of emergency responders at the scene of a wreck on a South Carolina highway. Bad state of affairs. Uh, four people in all were struck at as the car crossed into the crash scene in Florence from the other lanes of traffic, including a state trooper, and a Florence police officer. The first responders were helping after two motorcyclists were severely injured in a crash on State Highway 51. The officers and paramedics had little time to respond as the car came toward them. Quote, the city police officer pushed the trooper out of the way, say, rock on. You know, everybody says, well, you don't like, I don't want to see cops hurt or killed either. Okay, I'm not an animal. The police officer appeared to suffer a broken ankle and the trooper suffered a head injury. But both are respect, uh, expected to recover. Well, that's good right there. That's good. The driver who hit the people was taken to the hospital. The investigators say she appeared to be elderly. The sheriff did not release her name or condition. Now, let's start a debate here. At what 
point or what age should somebody retire their driver's license? You know, you've always heard about incidences where the elderly, they hit the gas, run through a window or something instead of hitting the brake. Is it a topic for the discussion? What should be the age where they got to pack that car in? Quote, when she plowed through there, I have no idea. The paramedic uh, killed was Sarah Weaver, 32. Sad state. Our, our thoughts go out to her family. 32 years old. Man. And the motorcyclist who died was uh, Cedric Gregg, 37, of Florence County. Coroner Keith Von Luckin said uh, they have a crash reconstruction team out of Myrtle Beach that is helping the department investigate. Our hearts go out to everybody involved. Wow. A uh, fabric of Sturgis rally woven with patches. Everybody knows about Sturges, don't we? And there they got a picture of uh, Hell's Angels there. Let's see here. One of the most visible pieces of motorcycle culture is the practice of sewing patches on jackets and vests. It is, too, man. It, it, it's really hard to find somebody that's good to sew on patches. Using the old school machines and stuff that just belts it through leather. A lot of places around here, you got to take it to the cleaners and you got to wait two weeks or something while they're, you know, you got an old timer out there pumping. It, it gets on right away. Anyway, Haley, be Ruby or be robe or I don't know. You guys got to give like Hollywood some chance here with these names. Who was sewing patches uh, on Wednesday for Sturgis Rally Goers represents the Third generation of Cowder's, uh, what is it? Cowder's Leather. They're out of Massachusetts. Uh, she re, uh, attends the rally every other year. It varies widely, she says, just as much as somebody would want something tattooed on them. It's very personal. A lot of times there will be Harley or Skulls on one liners. The most often we see here in Sturgis patches, patches that tell what years they were here. Rock on. Rock on. Uh, she goes on to say some people will come to us with a brand new vest and want us to sew a bunch of patches on it because they want to look the part. We see that every day, don't we? That's more often than someone who in... Natalie would have that many patches on their vest from years and years of work. <laughs> I have patches going back to the 80s on my stuff. I don't wear the the vest much anymore. I, I just don't know what it is anymore. I, I just don't wear it much. Anyway, here's one of the stories that you're going to get to see here in a minute. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. But... 42 traffic charges were laid during the Hells Angels gathering in Whitby. And that was last month when this happened. But they're just releasing all the uh, traffic reports and stuff. Uh, they said there were 172 vehicles processed. Yes, processed through checkpoints during the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club Canada run. And it was held uh, July 22nd to the 24th. Uh, rock and roll, man. They were freaking out there in force. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, man. <laughs> These cops are all over them. Well, let's take a look Rural at the area of Brooklyn, really Ontario, fun. north of Whitby, sits a farm where hundreds of Hells Angels and their associates from across Canada are meeting this weekend. A massive white party tent is set up for the annual Canada-run bike ride. And as you can see, there is paraphernalia on display. I think it's going to be a cool, cool experience to see. It's just going to be a good time. As locals watch the bikers roll through this normally quiet town, Durham Regional Police, the OPP and police partners from across the country are all here stopping each and every participant. We're going to control the intersections for traffic safety and public safety till Sunday at least. Police say bikers will have their motorcycles inspected and driver's license checked. A power police have under the Highway Traffic Act. 
Uh, if they do have wants or warrants, we'll respond as needed. Because what the police do is they use these checks to basically find out who's who in the zoo. Investigative journalist Julian Scher, who has written two books on the Hells Angels, says the Canada run is really a big publicity stunt. The Russian mob doesn't organize parades uh, through small town Ontario, but the bikers do. Cher says this weekend is a party, but says don't be fooled. The topic of discussion definitely will not be the weather. They try to settle disputes, um, figure out the, the rankings. And frankly, look, the Hells Angels, they call themselves outlaws. They're into drugs, extortion, uh, prostitution, murder if necessary. While some onlookers are excited. Probably the safest place in Canada I love right the now. last one. This is the safest place to be. I love it, man, when the general public gets out there and just throws a finger in the face of the man. It's beautiful stuff, man. You got to love them. You got to love it when the citizens get involved. Anyway, here is the main story. Now, they're upset at the governor and the AG of how they stood behind their reactions to this not guilty verdict. For one, for one, let me get you a little information on this guy here that was found not guilty and the judge threw out a bunch of charges. In 2012, he was charged with unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle negligent operation of a motor vehicle and speeding. 2013, he was charged with under the influence of liquor. 2014, pleaded guilty to driving and drug charges in Ohio, given false information and driving with a suspended license. 2017, pleaded guilty to possession of drugs. 2019 was arrested in Texas for possession of drug paraphernalia. A short time later, arrested on OUI charges in Connecticut. A few months later, June 3rd, in Texas, driving a truck hauling trailer with cars on the interstate when it flipped on its side after hitting a guardrail. June 21st, 18 days after he rolled this truck in Texas, killed the seven people on that motorcycle. Oh boy, does he have a history. He has a history indeed. Back to the story. I just wanted to give you a little background of what he did. Now, the defense lawyers are denouncing comments. They're so butthurt in these days and ages, these people. Made by New Hampshire Chris Sonono and his attorney general after a jury acquitted a truck driver in the deaths of seven motorcyclists. But they stood by their statements. That's what I'm talking about. Then it goes into the two-week trial, blah, blah, blah. After the verdict, the governor said he shares in the shock, outrage, and anger that so many have expressed. I do wonder, though, who, what prosecutor, why was he appointed? He dropped the ball big time. He goes on to say the Fallen Seven did not receive justice, and that's an absolute tragedy. And then the Attorney General came up and said he should have been found guilty on all the charges in this case and held responsible for causing seven deaths and numerous injuries. Now, the New Hampshire Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers said his comment had violated professional standards. Screw your professional standards. You're the ones who went after the victim. Or victims. And that both statements criticizing the verdict could deter 
future jury service. So much drama. Their statement was it was irresponsible, dangerous, disrespectful. Well, so was his actions that day. That led to seven deaths. Damaging to the integrity of the criminal legal system. You, some of you freaking uh, little cockroaches that take defense cases of the worst of the worst. Yeah. Damaging to the integrity of the legal system. We'll leave it there for that one. Uh, then he go on to say they're also contrary to rules designed to protect the rights of the accused and protect jurors from undue influence and harassment. Where were you guys where or when all these trials were happening because of all these riots? Just asking. Just asking. Your outrage wasn't there, I can tell you that. But yeah, that was a list of things that he did leading up to that motorcycle accident. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show right now. I'm going to get down, baby. We're going to have some fun. Join us over on Discord, the whole nine yards. Rock on. We'll be right back after this music break. And thanks for sticking through the whole show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also check out these other videos. Rock on.